If I want to find the density, like you need the mass and the volume. So the mass is pretty simple. I would put it on the triple beam balance, and I want to make sure that the mass beam is in the grooves here, and 280 something. So the mass is pretty easy. And I can find the mass of the lead ball the same way. I just put it on there, and I find which groove it fits in, and, and I find the mass of it. But to find the volume of a regularly shaped object, I'm going to use length, width, and height. I'm going to find the length, and then the width is opposite length. Length is the longest side and width. And then the height is usually the thickness. So I find all those, and in this case, they would be in centimeters or millimeters, probably. And I would multiply those together, and I'd get centimeters cubed or millimeters cubed, depending on what I use. And then I'll take the mass that I found and divide it by the volume I calculated. Now how about this one? I can't measure length, width, and height of this. There's too many irregular parts to it. So I have to do something different. I would find the mass first, but then I'm going to use something called the overflow can. I would fill this up to overflowing, okay, and I'm going to let it drip out totally. And I have a graduated cylinder now to actually collect the water and determine the volume. We've got to let it get down here. And then all I've got to do is collect the water, and I gently put this in. You can see how the water jumps in there. I already know the mass of that weight, and I'm going to get all the liquid I can out of this. And then I can test my volume using a grad cylinder. And always remember to use the bottom of that bubble. It's called the meniscus. The volume here is about 20.5 milliliters. I had a mass here of 220 some grams, and I divide those two out. What do you do with about a liquid? Find the density of a liquid. You notice I have a, a beaker of some liquid, and people want to have the tendency to use all of this to find density. You don't need to. Whether I use one drop of this liquid, or half of it, or all of it, I can find the density. Because all I need is a particular mass and its volume, or I need a certain volume and its mass. So to kill two birds with one stone, I'm going to use a grad cylinder because I can get volume. And I'm going to first find the mass of the graduated cylinder. And the mass of the cylinder is just over 25 grams. So I know the mass. Then I can put in any volume of this liquid. I just might make sure that I can measure it. I don't want to overfill it. Now I take the mass again. So I had 25.0 grams. Now it's gone up to about 33 grams. So right there you see the mass of the water is about 8 grams, just in that area. And then I look at its volume, and sure enough, it is 8.0 milliliters. I can read it directly. So I found the mass by subtracting the mass of this dry cylinder. It was 8 grams. I found the volume by looking at the volume directly. It's 8 milliliters. Divide 8 grams by 8 milliliters, and I get 1 gram per milliliter. So we know that this liquid is water intensive property.